Jurassic Park post dubstep. Uh, that seems dead out, do you know what I mean? We're on kind of Bronze Age future step now. I don't like Future Garage. It reminds me a little bit of intelligent drum and bass. I just say bass music. Um, and I kind of I kind of sympathise because that's not actually that descriptive. But to me, bass music just kind of sums up, you know, it's the main element. Would you, you know? still consider yourself a dubstep producer? Um, I mean, by context, yeah. I mean, that word is useful for context because it's basically there's just a lot of guys that come through, you know, come through from that sound. And hopefully, even if it does explode and splinter off into all these kind of things, it would be nice if there was like a reference to dubstep or something, you know, but it's still got that unified kind of, it still doesn't forget its roots, if you know what I mean. At the moment, I'm just kind of quite enjoying the ambiguity of it all. Um, it's leading to some interesting bookings, like I'm playing on um, electro lineups. I mean, I mean, I haven't yet, but I know guys that are playing on hip hop lineups. It's okay to listen to like more than one type of music at the moment. That's the vibe I'm getting. Where it's kind of, I don't know. It was very tribal. I mean, I was guilty of it. I, my record collection is just jungle for kind of ten years, and I kind of wore it like a badge. You know what I mean? And looking back, that's stupid. <laughs> Yeah, London's really healthy at the moment. There's now so many sounds in dubstep or, or lots of producers that have come out of it. No one really knows what's going on. It's a bit of a mess, but it's a good mess. You've got the UK funky guys, you know, G, Roska. You've got the, the Night Slubs crew, do you know what I mean? So you've got Bok Bok, and you know, they play funky, but then they also play this quite up-tempo, I suppose, house kind of thing. Hessel Audio guys, you've got the kind of Bristol Berlin sound got the Bristol purple kind of sound joke and all that it's like wow there's just so many kind of little things but you can hear that people are getting influenced by each other it's, it's creating interesting mutations and uh, yeah there's a real buzz at the moment some people can go hype, hype to it some people hate it I suppose I was playing around with sounds similar to a tune of mine called Discipline so there was just loads of stuff in it like quite dark, quite dubby sounds. And I heard them down to Plastic People and it was like, you know what, this is this is really muddy actually. There's just two for a for a sound system like that, you know, that is just so physical in the bass, like there's too much going on. There's too much going on and I just kind of need to start building tunes with less kind of elements in them. My secret weapon is uh, something it's it's like sound of animals or something, which is like a Hollywood effects kind of DVD kind of thing and uh, yeah the, the hippos detuned hippos going in there lots of bird sounds slowed down wild boar they're pretty rough it's weird how kind of now as soon as like as soon as a tune is bounced out of a computer and maybe someone's played it so either a DJ's played it out someone will be on their phone taping it it'll upload it to YouTube it will get loads of hits People know that tune, people post about it on forums. It's like, right, you know, the tune's only a day old, maybe a couple of days old, but already it's it's out there, you know, and it might not come out for six months. So it's kind of that thing of dub play culture. I don't know, I mean, people are sharing their tunes, people are sharing the music. I, I was quite disappointed, actually. There's, there's there's not enough egos in, the, in dubstep, you know. When I kind of got in, I thought there was kind of gonna be this whole, I had different preconceptions about uh, what the scene was gonna be like, but yeah, you know. Everyone gets on, there's no beef, everyone shares tunes. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Boring. Yeah, yeah. As a kid, I was really into Hendrix, like kind of fanatically. But after that, I was into, got into kind of the grunge stuff and then was really in jungle and drum and bass. I started raving young when I, I mean, we went to my first club. When I was 13. I was kind of bored of the guitar sound basically. Um, and yeah, just hearing all these break beats coming in for hardcore. Um, and then, you know, these dark 1993 jungle tunes. Yeah, that's when I really started kind of being influenced, you know, and just going, oh, I actually need to start making tunes at some point. 